My name is Timothy Nolan. I'm one of the head tutors with MCAT Self Prep. And over my five years of working on the MCAT, I've had so many students ask me, what score do I need on the MCAT? Today, I'm here to share with you my best answer to this question and try to help you understand where your MCAT score fits into your application process and figuring out what you really need to succeed and to go on to be a medical student and a physician. The way I see it, this question of what score do I need on the MCAT is an incomplete question. Really, you need to have it a little bit more focused so I can even try to help you with it. Generally, there's four different ways someone can ask this question. What score do I need to get into XYZ school? Fill in the blank, however you want. The second question is, what score do I need to go to an MD school? The third question might be, what score do I need to get into a DO school? And the last question could be, what score do I need to tutor for MCAT self prep? Out of those four questions, each of them has a very different answer, but I just want to take a minute and kind of describe how the MCAT is scored first, just to make sure we're all on the same page. So the MCAT has four different sections. There's the chemistry physics section, the critical analysis and reasoning skills section, the biology biochemistry section, and the psych social section. Between those four sections, you'll get a score between 118 and 132 in each section, with 125 being completely average, the 50th percentile score. That means half the students are scoring above 125 and half are scoring below 125. It's perfectly in the middle. Now, you add up your score for all four sections with the same scoring system, and you'll get an, a total score. And in that total score, it'll be between 472 and 528, with 500 being exactly in the average. The stats are within a point of this every year. This upcoming year, the true average is 501, so that's not a concern. They publish their percentiles, and this advice will stand true just about every year. There's not much movement in this test because they intentionally standardize it so that each standard deviation is 10 points away from that mean. So with that said, a lot of this advice I'm going to give today is based off of percentiles. To be a good competitive applicant to a certain school, you need to understand their baseline statistics. If I'm talking about a top five school at Johns Hopkins, they're going to have a very different admissions profile than a local state school like the University of Massachusetts. So I need to know what school I'm looking at in order to have a good idea of what MCAT score I need to apply. So to answer that first question, what score do I need to apply to XYZ school and to be admitted there? Really, the best answer to that question is going to be, what are the average stats for that school? There are many tools you can use that can actually help you understand this information. So there's the MSAR, the Medical School Admissions Requirements, that's offered by the AAMC, and it has detailed information on every single school, including average MCAT, average GPA, 10th, 90th, 25th, 75th percentiles, and what I think is the most important, the 50th percentile. As a general rule of thumb, try to be at the 50th percentile for a school to be competitive there. Of course, people below that get into the school as well, but if you really want to have a good chance of getting interviewed and having a chance of being accepted, that's a good benchmark to shoot for. You don't want to be below their median or below their average and still expecting to get in. Now, if you don't really have as strong of a preference for which school you go to, you just want to go to some MD school and be an allopathic doctor, then it's a little bit different. There's a wide range in schools. Johns Hopkins, their average might be in the high five teens. But there's definitely other MD schools whose averages are around 510. With that in mind, if you're willing to apply to 20 or more schools, you can probably get a 508, 510 in that 70th to 80th percentile range and still have a very competitive chance of being interviewed at a couple schools and possibly getting admitted to one. Obviously, if you can score closer to 512, even better. But if you can get 510, you have a very reasonable chance of getting into medical school. Now, if you're willing to go to a DO school, the osteopathic schools, those ones are actually going to have a little bit of a lower threshold in terms of statistics. They have a more comprehensive reviewing format. They have the other ideas like osteopathic muscle manipulation and treating the whole body as one. And because of that, they're not so focused on any one test criteria. For a DO school, in that case, you could have an average score. It could be like 505, maybe 504. And there'll be some schools that you're absolutely competitive at. There is a lot more variability in these DO schools and MD schools, so I'd highly recommend looking up which schools you're interested in before applying, just to make sure you are competitive at each of the schools. You don't want to waste a hundred something dollars on an application 
just to know that you don't meet their minimum requirement. And that's one other interesting point I want to make sure I really highlight. These schools treat the MCAT like an, a hurdle you have to get over to get an interview invite. Getting a great MCAT score does not guarantee you'll get into that medical school. Having above their median MCAT score, again, doesn't guarantee you'll get into that school. The MCAT is good for getting your secondary applications read and for getting an interview invite. It is not meant as the end-all be-all, and there are many other factors these schools are considering when offering acceptances. So, having a great MCAT is just one piece of the puzzle, but it is absolutely a necessary piece of the puzzle. There are schools like Minnesota that have minimum requirements for what your MCAT total has to be to even be considered. There's other schools that say you need to have at least this CAR score, especially in Canada. There's a lot of schools like that. So you need to make sure that you're hitting all the requirements needed at a school before you apply there to make sure you're not wasting any money. The last question I think is the most fun. What score do you need to be a tutor for MCAT self-prep? The way I see it, to be a good tutor, you need to have mastery of this knowledge and you need to be able to help students with whatever goal they have. So you should be above the median for all these competitive schools. Some of these competitive schools have a median score of 516, 517. I've even seen 518 before. With that in mind, we don't hire any tutors that are below the 97th percentile in scores. That means they're getting 519 or better on their MCAT on real test day. They're competitive at any school they want to apply to, and they'd be able to help their students get up to that same mark. Now, there are other test companies that will hire someone with a 515. And while 90th percentile score is nothing to sneeze at, it's also below median at some of these most competitive schools. So if you ever want to work for MCAT Self Prep, I'd be more than happy to look at your application if you scored 519 or better. With that in mind, I want to wish you good luck studying. The MCAT is a big test, and you're going to be able to do well on it if you give yourself enough hours to study, you have this clear goal in mind and great motivation. But if you ever need more personalized help on any of these topics, feel free to reach out to any MCAT Self Prep tutor. We'd be more than happy to offer you a 10 minute consultation and figure out what we can best do to help you on your MCAT journey and to help you get into the medical school of your dreams. Thank you for your time and I hope you watch another one of our videos. We really do try and give you a lot of information here.